Hi guys, this is me reading stuff. I am Robin. What's up? How you doing? How's your heart? How's your digestion? That's a normal thing to ask. What's bothering you these days? What's pleasing you? Are you getting sick of me? I'm sick of me. How about this one? What would you rather watch? A horror movie or a rom-com? And what do you think of the term rom-com? I'll never forget the first time I heard that. What about the term dramedy? Uh, I would rather watch a horror movie. And I saw a really good one on Netflix yesterday, by the way. It's called Hush. I highly recommend it. It's su- it really scared. Nothing scares me. I, I, um, my dad allowed me to watch The Exorcist at the age of five. So it's a little hard to penetrate my, uh, my fear. But this one did it somehow. And it kind of has this, the theme of solitude, which is what the theme of the week for me is. And also the theme of today's podcast. So let's get started. I am going to be reading from my book that's just simply titled Solitude. It's a small anthology of poems from um, Every Man's Library, which is a division of Alfred A. Knopf. I will put a link in the description of the podcast to let you know where you can find this book. Uh, I, I believe I found this one wandering a Barnes & Noble in Kingwood, Texas back in 2005. So that's where I got mine. I don't, I don't think you need to go there for, for that, although I used to enjoy that. That was one thing about living in Kingwood, Texas that I did enjoy. I don't know if the Barnes & Noble was actually in Kingwood. It was in a p- town called Umble. That's how they pronounce the word H-U-M-B-L-E there in, in Texas, just to give you an idea. <laughs> That's so gross. I, I can't even get over I, I, I It's so disgusting sounding to me. I believe one of my heroes, Howard Hughes, might have been from Humble, Texas, by the way. So it is good for something. All right, you guys. So I've never read Emily Dickinson on this podcast. I don't think so anyway. Someone needs to help me. Someone needs to uh, give me a list of every poem I've ever read. Uh, no big deal. Just, just asking the general public, uh, who, whoever's listening to this, to uh, do a spreadsheet for me. No, I need to put that together because I actually can't remember who I've read or what I've read by each person I've read, so it's kind of starting to worry me a bit. Uh, today I'll be reading... Emily Dickinson's poem, Me From Myself to Banish. Me from myself to banish had I art, impregnable my fortress unto all heart. But since myself assault me, how have I peace except by subjugating consciousness? And since we're mutual monarch, how this be except by abdication, me, of me. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to just read, you know, that is from um, a section in the book called, I don't know exactly what it's called, let me see. Uh, Something like, something about despair, perhaps. Um, But another section of the book um, on solitude is also, on the virtues of solitude. So let me pick a a random, I don't know which one to choose here, but I'm just going to open it up and see what happens. Okay. Oh, well, this couldn't be any better. This is probably my favorite one in the book. There's a reason it opened up because I always look at it. It's by Philip Larkin. Philip Larkin, English poet, novelist, I don't know much about him. I know, I think he was a librarian as well. And by the way, everyone knows about Emily Dickinson, so I didn't mention Emily Dickinson. Uh, obviously one of the most important American poets of all time, everyone's favorite introvert. What else do I know of her? Born in Massachusetts, died in Massachusetts. There you go. That's about all I can. And Philip Larkin, I don't know exactly. He probably died in the 50s or something. Nope, I was wrong. He died in 1985. Sorry, gang. This is th- this could not be any better. And I know I mentioned I've been going through some stuff. Uh, well, what's new? And that's not unique to me. So I kind of feel bad that I even went on and on about it. I was just in a mood the other day, and I apologize for being a little... I don't know if that was self-important or self-obsessed, but I was just really upset. And I... Um, 
Long story short, I've spent a lot of good quality time with myself with no distractions, and that really helped. So what better way to usher in this Philip Larkin poem than to tell you that and that I'm doing better thanks to uh, focusing on what I need. Uh, That's not normally that easy for me to do, by the way. I know it may seem like it is, but it's not. I have to really work at that. So I've been very quiet. I've been listening, I've been watching a lot of documentaries, movies, TV shows, some scary, some funny. And in doing that while drawing the whole time, I, I just, I've kind of recentered myself or reset myself, and it feels great. So anyway, back to Philip Larkin. My God, I'm so excited to share this with you. This poem is called Best Society. When I was a child, I thought, casually, that solitude never needed to be sought. Something everybody had, like nakedness, it lay at hand. Not specially right or specially wrong, a plentiful and obvious thing, not at all hard to understand. Then, after 20, it became at once more difficult to get and more desired, though all the same, more undesirable, For what you are alone has to achieve the rank of fact to be expressed in terms of others, or it's just a compensating make-believe. Much better to stay in company. To love, you must have someone else. Giving requires a legatee. Good neighbors need whole parishfuls of folk to do it on. In short, our virtues are all social if, deprived of solitude, you chafe. It's clear you're not the virtuous sort. Viciously, then, I lock my door. The gas fire breathes. The wind outside ushers in evening rain. Once more, uncontradicting solitude supports me on its giant palm. And like a sea anemone or simple snail, there cautiously unfolds, emerges what I am. How you like me now? That's me. That's what I needed right now. Beating my chest, throwing my book, being excited, feeling understood. <laughs> Thank you, Philip Larkin, wherever you may be. Um, woo. All right. Yes, I've had coffee and no food. And yes, my heart is beating through my chest. You can see it through my shirt. I may have told you this. I may not have. But... I have a heart disease that I've had since birth, and my heart beats extra hard among, um, amongst it doing other weird things. And I can see my heart beating through my shirt almost all the time. But right now, I really can. i got to catch my breath. Let me hit pause. One minute. I think I upset my neighbors when I banged my book really hard. Oh, well. My neighbor's been um, driving me crazy as well, so that's fine. Although, even though he listens to this dumb music underneath me all the time... Um, I'm trying to be cool and just go, you know what? He's just having a good time. He just likes his music, Robin. Leave him alone. Hey, I got to thank someone named Eric Dover who left me some really nice notes on Podomatic. Thank you, Eric. Uh, that made me so happy that you were getting so excited driving in your car that you almost got in an accident or whatever it was you said that you wanted to take notes. That made me so happy. That's how, that's, that's how I feel when I hear great things. I just kind of have to stop everything. And it might be the same person, um, Haley Bobbing on iTunes, left me a great review saying they were driving home from their uncle's house and the drive home is normally miserable and my podcast made it more tolerable. Thank you, Haley Bobbing. And Eric Dover, I don't know if you know this, but you have the, you might be the same person. I used to love a band named Jellyfish and there was an Eric Dover in that band. I don't know if that's you. If that's you, uh, hit me up because you meant... A whole lot to me. And if it's not you, Eric Dover, the other Eric Dover who's writing to me on Podomatic and iTunes, I love you. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you all of you for putting up with me, for dealing with me. I hope your week is going well. I'm thinking of you always. Thanks for being patient with me. I will talk to you again soon, uh, Monday morning, as a matter of fact. Have a great weekend. Take good care of yourselves. <laughs>